Number 37 sitting of the Tobago House of Assembly 2009 to 2013 session took place in the Assembly Chamber to debate the draft bill to amend the THA Act and the Constitution as it relates to Tobago. However, noticeably absent was the minority who had made a last minute attempt to have the proceedings postponed. Madam Presiding Officer, I think we as Tobagonians must take pride in this particular process. Because I say without fear of contradiction, that the process which has led to today's debate is the most consultative and democratic process ever embarked on by any government or any assembly in the quest for constitutional and legislation. I defy anybody to tell me anything differently. It was a process that started in this house in 2005 and I want us to remember that in 2005, with a motion then moved by the minority leader, Mr. Hucho Charles. It was a process that continued. And in 2007, there was another motion which introduced the constitutional element to this process. And Madam Presiding Officer, I am very proud to see as a Tobigonian that that process over the last four years has involved communities, groups, individuals, sectors, and political parties in a number of consultations, whether it was in the villages, in the community centers, in the schools, people were involved. And I defy anyone in Tobago who would have wanted to become involved in this process to tell me that they did not have an opportunity so to be involved. And I'm saying therefore, Madam Presiding Officer, this administration, which I have the honor to lead, this administration was criticized. We were criticized because the process was taking too long. We were criticized for dragging our feet. We were even criticized for not getting involved enough. But we took a deliberate decision, Madam Presiding Officer, that this particular administration is going to ensure that that process was not led, was not controlled by Tobigonians, so that at the end of the day, every Tobigonian can own the process, and by extension, own the document that came out of that particular process. And I must say that today we can say, as we stand in the people's house, that we are in the people's house discussing the people's document for the benefit of the people of the people. The Tobago House of Assembly is not over London, it's not the majority, it's not the minority. It is the institution elected by the people of Tobago to represent the people of Tobago for a certain specified period of time. And therefore, in that specified period of time, the Tobago House of Assembly must be considered the legal authority to speak on behalf of the people of Tobago. And the of Tobago. Because, Madam Presiding Officer, I am saying to you, and you see, we've got to understand, sometimes we set precedents that turn around, as they say in, in local parlance, to lick you up down the road. Here it is that we are in the process of asking for additional authority and autonomy and respect and dignity for the Tobago House of Assembly. How can we therefore encourage any situation that will allow the Tobago House of Assembly to be undermined and the Tobago House of Assembly to be disrespected? It is in that context, Madam Presiding Officer, that we decided now that that letter was written since September the 13th, to go ahead with the process which the Tobago House of Assembly and the people of Tobago, by extension, had mandated us to do. And therefore, we went ahead. The committee sent its final report, the report, and we were very careful not to let it seem, because it never was a PNM report. The report was handed over to the presiding officer, the chief secretary. The minority leader was invited. He never turned up. I think they made sure they got a copy onto him. And I indicated in that meeting 
that I'm guaranteeing to the people of Tobago that what is going to be debated in the House today is exactly what the committee would have transmitted to the presiding officer. And I would want you all to ask the chairman of the committee, ask the presiding officer, whether Orville London contributed or any member on this side contributed to changing one single word in this document. So this document, as far as I'm concerned, is untarnished, representing the views of the people of Tobago and the aspirations and the recommendations of the people of Tobago as transmitted to the presiding officer by the committee with this assembly representing the people of Tobago had set up to garner the views of the people of Tobago. The chief secretary responded to the actions of Mr. Jack. What the minority leader is telling us that after a process which started in this house in 2005, a process which continued based on a motion that he brought into the house in 2007, a process that would have involved thousands of Tobagonians in meetings, in consultations, in discussions, in, 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 in representations, etc., that we should abandon that and because the Attorney General has decided that he is going to adopt a document and turn it into a green paper, that we should in fact accept that. But Madam Presiding Officer, the really difficult issue about that is that if we were to go down that road, we would be in a position where the Tobago House of Assembly would be totally out of the process. Because basically what you're going to have there is a situation where the green paper becomes a white paper laid in parliament to big house of assemblies totally out as they were out in 1996. I received another letter from him this morning. Uh, uh, and this letter uh, basically is saying the same thing. And, but I think I want to read one section. Sir, you have made much about your negotiation skills. If ever Tobago needed those skills, it is now. And hear what they say. I urge you to seek urgent dialogue with the Prime Minister. Since there is a commitment that the Chief Secretary and Prime Minister will sit and discuss the prime, this issue. In 1977, the majority of Tobagonians were in full support of Tobago autonomy. And he talked about it being frustrated and in 1995 and so on. In 2011, your actions are reminiscent of those of your PNM colleagues from 1997. Uh, as you now want to start a war with the central government that is finally ready to accede to the dec decades-old desire of Tobagonia. This confrontational stance is not in the best interest of Tobago. We continue, and listen to this, to view, be of the view that this debate is unnecessary at this time. And we continue to advocate cooperation, not confrontation with central government on this issue. We want to signal our commitment to participate in all discussions with the central government towards a single bill that captures the aspirations of Tobagonians in the context of the current political construct. When a single bill is agreed upon, that is between the Tobago House of Assembly and the central government, the minority side will be willing to debate this bill and fully support its submission to the cabinet of Trinidad and Tobago. Madam Presiding Officer, my father will turn in his grave if I accede to something like that. Madam Presiding Officer, this is not negotiation, this is surrender. Because here we have a process which all of us were involved in. Here we have a process where for the first time we can say Tobago people know what they want, they're saying what they want. Let that be the basis for discussion. If you want to change it, give us reasons and give the country reason for change. We're not unreasonable people. But let us start with something. You are going to tell me that as a representative of the people of Tobago, you are going to tell this August chamber, 
tell the people of Tobago that you are not prepared. I mean, it is frightening. You are not prepared to even come here and discuss with us. Come here and cuss us. I don't have no problem with that. Do it in the people's chamber. But you are telling me that I must go to speak to a prime minister. That it will take me three months to, to, for to return a phone call to discuss Tobago people business. And there's a house of assembly where the business of the people of Tobago could be discussed. Come on. What is happening? I mean, what have we come to? Because basically, it is either surrender or sell out or both. I tend to agree. Because, Madam Presiding Officer, I mean, this puts it out there blatantly that here we have a minority representing the people of Tobago not prepared to represent the people of Tobago except on instructions from their masters and mistresses. Mr. London then made his presentation where he noted that the paper up for debate favored Tobago more than the green paper. And I want to say, Madam Presiding Officer, that one of the things about which I am comfortable, and I defy anyone on the other side, the empty side, or anybody, to look at this document and the other document and tell me whether there is anything in the green paper that is not in this document. In fact, Madam Presiding Officer, you know what is intriguing? Every positive benefit to Tobago that is in the green paper is in this document. And there are some benefits to Tobago that are not in the green paper but are in this document. And that is why I ask the question, why should somebody pertaining or, or purporting, sorry, to represent Tobago be prepared for us to go back to a green paper that gives Tobago less than this document that we are now discussing? Because this particular issue that treats with the Tobago House of Assembly and the legislature and assembly laws is identical to what is in the green paper. So we equal on that. Deputy Chief Secretary Hilton Sandy also voiced his concern about the move by the minority to postpone the debate. Madam President Officer, I listened to the Chief Secretary when it was said that he should cancel the debate today. And the minority leader should know that once the presiding officer sent out documents and called a meeting of this house, the Chief Secretary, nor the Minority Leader, cannot stay out of the House and cancel a sitting. The sitting must be called. And the Leader of Government Business, having discussed with the members on the other side, with an agreement in this House, that is why they say the access and the standing order says you must go to the back there and discuss that. And that could have happened if the member or the minority leader was in the house and had a discussion with the leader of government business, Honorable Tracy Davids, and a consensus was arrived at. Then is when they could now pass a motion to postpone the sitting in this August chamber. So when he wants to stay outside the house and to run the business of the house outside, that does not happen. Other than that, it's best we close down the assembly. You see, Madam President Officer, since we have this PP operation taking place, the minority leader gave the people the impression to the people of Tobago that he is in government, that he is part of the government of Shana Tobago. And I want to state it here today that the minority leader is not a member of the government of Shana Tobago. The only people in Tobago who has claimed to be members of the government is the representative for Tobago East constituency and the representative for Tobago West constituency. The minority leader role in politics 
is right in this house as minority leader. That is rule. He can speak to his friends <coughs> in government. He can influence processes in government. But he's not in government. I want that to be cleared so that my people will understand that. Mr. Sandy also compared the John Prince appointed committee document with that of the Green Paper. The same chapter 11a. But words doesn't mean anything. By putting at the heading internal self government of Tobago in the Constitution, that doesn't say anything. Because when you go through the document, is some from the old that we have, and they would have put in the additional things that didn't have to go here, like the procedure, how you make law. That would have to go in the Constitution. That goes into the standing orders. That can go into big all of the Act. So the procedure, what you want is the basic law. The procedure comes out after. Because what is happening after we will finish passing this Tobago House Assembly modification to chart the course in the Constitution, you have the other one to come. Because we first want to pass the constitutional document, debate them, and then you move forward. <coughs> Madam President Officer, This Tobago also Assembly went through this process before. But what happened in the last occasion when our Chief Secretary was in another place and was accused for not wanting to support the Tobago House of Assembly Act, number 40 of 1996. And he gave his reasons, and the reasons that he gave was that he wanted the government to send the document to the Tobago House of Assembly to have it discussed before passing it. We see it happening again. We are seeing that the minority leader is going down that road by saying, let the PP government send it so we follow. This Tobago House of Assembly is the government for Tobago. The governance of the people of Tobago is through this chamber and the executive council, which mirrors the cabinet of Trinidad and Tobago. At a time when they went ahead to make the adjustment to give Tobago constitutional arrangements, Madam President Officer, in 1996, you had a Constitutional Amendment Act, number 39 of 1996. So number 39 was the Constitutional Amendment. And the number 40 was the Tobago House of Assembly Act. And I have in my position here that document that was passed in the House and ascended to on the 5th of December, 1996, by the President of the Republic of Trinidad and Tobago. And that is the one that I tell you, as I mentioned before, from the PNN document, it's here. There shall be an assembly for Tobago, we call it Tobago also assembly, in this chapter referred to as the assembly. Same thing. Manning discussed with the Long Noon Committee. Most of the things appear in this thing. So what happened is that the now government saw a good document drafted by the PNM. They took it, modified it, put some more sugar into the, into the, 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 into the thing. And there we have num Act number 40 of 19, 
96. Addressing the House again, Chief Secretary Orville London questioned the minority's absence from the sitting on the grounds that the process is illegal. Because according to them, it runs counter to 29.2 of the Tobago House of Assembly Act. Now, Section 29 of the Tobago House of Assembly Act, in effect, treats with the whole question of uh, the, a bill adopted by the Assembly shall not seek to abrogate, suspend, repeal, alter, override, or be contrary to any written law of the Republic of Trinidad and Tobago or impose any direct or indirect taxation, whatever. Madam Presiding Officer, I happen to be uh, part of the process, involved in the process when this particular act was being framed. And the whole purpose of this act is that the Tobago House of Assembly should ensure that it focuses on those areas that are confined to the Tobago House of Assembly. And it makes sense. In other words, you're not supposed to interfere or try to control the situation at the national level. So you can't pass a law here that is going to affect uh, a national a law that impacts on the nation or the country as a whole. And there's nothing wrong with that. Because I want to suggest, Madam Presiding Officer, two things, and they're both very important. Because if we were to take the literal interpretation of the minority to say that we can do nothing that can alter or change any law, even a law specific to Tobago, then we can do nothing. And it just does not make sense. Because any law, any amendment, any recommendation that we make, any motion that we pass that leads to a bill, that motion by definition is going to, in effect, alter an existing law. But I think more importantly, Madam Presiding Officer, and this is where I think Tobago has to be concerned, especially those Tobagonians who are represented by these people on the other side. <clears throat> because here you had a situation, Madam Presiding Officer, where you had the representative, the minority leader, who has been involved in this process since 2005. He was here when Mr. Charles moved the original motion. He himself moved the motion in 2007, which would have triggered this particular process. And at all stages, the process was the climax today with this debate and this activity in the House. I am asking us, therefore, how it is that you could have been involved in a process for six years, that you could have been initiated a process four years ago, and then now, at this late stage, on the day of when that process is going to climax in a manner that you yourself should feel satisfied and gratified that, hey, I was involved in the start of something, that you're going to tell us that all along it was illegal. And that is why. Madam Presiding Officer, we have to come to the conclusion that there are things going on within the ranks on the other side that are not necessarily to the benefit of Tobago and us as Tobagoians. Because what they have done, the positions that they have taken, make absolutely no sense and have nothing to do with what is going on today or what is going on for the welfare of the people of today. Here we have a situation, and I must reiterate this, that we are in the people's house doing the people's business. And if there is some disagreement, then it is up to us, the representatives of the people, to treat with those disagreements and those concerns in the house. I cannot accept that on two separate occasions where this very important issue was to be debated, that we had a situation where our minority <coughs> refused to participate in the debate. In other words, you actually had a situation where the minority would have, in fact, 
orchestrated the events so as to ensure that they do have to pass. And I'm saying the reason why they did that is that they, they cannot come here. And they cannot come here, Madam Presiding Officer, for two reasons. One, it is about credibility, and two, it is about fear. They cannot come here and debate this motion because, as I indicated earlier, it will destroy whatsoever little credibility they have left because they told us that this particular process was not a process that would have led to this time and this place and this activity and this achievement. But their process is the one that we should follow. And they took a whole island and placed a whole island in jeopardy because of that. And now that the island is recognizing that they did it in vain, they have to back down. But the second one is fair. The minority members have been instructed. And they have been instructed not to participate. So that if they their, 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 their masters and mistresses they say, you can't get involved in that, you know. Whatever reason you give, just don't get involved. Because it's in the last 48 hours, I have got from the minority leader, based on the letters that he has sent to me, and based on the, on the press release, three different reasons why he has not attended here today. And I see this as a sign, as the signs of a very desperate man. But I want to suggest, Madam Presiding Officer, that these individuals have made themselves irrelevant to the process. And as such, those of us who remain committed to a process in which all of us have been engaged for five years, in some cases, a little less than that in others, those of us who remain committed to that process will continue to do what is necessary to ensure that the objectives of the mandate are carried out and the wishes of the people of Tobago are in fact carried out. With the minority being absent from the chamber, a motion was moved to have the debate at a later date. You have just seen the 37th sitting of the Tobago House of Assembly 2009-2013 to session. Thank you for joining us. For the Department of Information, I am Sophie Guillaume.